Who am I that a king would set his eyes on a cross for me? Who am I full of sin and full of pride and brokenness that you would leave heaven and glory to write me back into your story? message of this of last year of 2019 I'm excited about sharing the message again today starting off with a new series for this entire year if you guys were here and most of you were in 2019 you know that we went through uh, looking at living in the red and the idea was looking at the red letter words of Jesus the words that he spoke not just hearing them not just reading them but living them living the words and so this year we shift gears a little bit. We build on that foundation of Jesus, and we look at uh, this idea of living out loud. And live out loud. And some of you got the, the okay, the wristband, because I said manlet or bracelet. Wristband. Some of you got the wristbands. If you didn't, we got them outside. Just let me know before you leave. Uh, but the theme, it says live out loud. And the idea is to live out loud this year. To take 2020 and to boldly and fearlessly live out our faith in this world. And we're going to do that by looking at the book of Acts through this entire year. But before we jump in, I, I want to go ahead and I want to open I want to open not just this service, but this entire study and this entire year as we as we jump in. So let's open with a word of prayer. Father, you are good. Father, you are so good. Meet us. Meet us in this place. Father, open our hearts, our eyes, our ears our minds, our spirits, may we be receptive. Father, may we see you, may we hear you, may we feel you and embrace you. Father, change us. In this new year, God, lead us, guide us, protect us, provide for us, give us faith, uh, uh, increase that. Father, give us peace, hope, strength. God, don't leave us the same. Don't let us leave this church the same. Don't leave this church the same. Father, change us, move in us, work in us, God, so that we in this year can boldly live out loud and proclaim your goodness everywhere we go so you are glorified in everything. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, we're going to be looking, like I said, the entire book of Acts. Acts chapter 1 is where we're going to be today. If you guys want to go ahead and turn there now, I will turn there with you. While you're turning there, Imagine for a moment that, that you see a, a young boy or a young girl sitting in, uh, let's just say they're sitting in their bedroom, and uh, their, their eyes are open, but they're dreaming, right? They're, they're, maybe there's even a gleam or a twinkle in their eye because uh, they're dreaming, they're imagining what they're going to be when they grow up. You guys ever been there? You ever sit around and dream, dream big when you were a little kid? Yeah, because we dream big, right? I can tell you those little kids are not sitting in the room dreaming about just, you know, meeting the status quo. They're not dreaming about just growing up and surviving or existing or just being average, mediocre, just fitting in. They're dreaming big. Now, I know that because I was once a little boy, littler than I am. Hard to believe, I know, but I was. Uh, and, and I had big dreams. I did. I didn't just dream of just growing up and just fitting in or barely surviving or just existing. No, I was dreaming big because I think God has plans for us. I think he wants big things for us. Uh, we dream big, but, but guys, listen, what do we usually do? We, we settle, don't we? 
I think we see the world around us, uh, and we dream big, and we see the world around us settling. I think some of that, though, is, and don't hear me wrong, uh, I think some of that is, is some of what we're taught as we're growing up. Listen, as a parent myself, let me just say this, okay, emphatically. We absolutely have to support our kids' dreams. We do. We support their dreams, their, their desires, their goals, their ambitions. We support that 100%, okay? But if you're like me, you probably heard your parents say, you can do anything you want to do, right? Show of hands, anybody? Like 10 of you, okay. Right, that's not bad. Okay, there's probably more than 10. But anyways, <laughs> those are good words. And listen, for some people, it's totally true. For some, it depends on what you want to do. I mean, if you're a nerdy little kid and you want to grow up and work at NASA, you can probably grow and you can go to the right colleges and you can just develop the skills that you need to go do that. But it's not true for everybody. It just really isn't. For example, when I was a little boy, I wanted to be a football player in the NFL. Quarterback. See, there's the laughter. Yeah, you can tell me. I don't have the height, I don't have the weight, I don't have the speed or the agility, the overall lack of skill kind of rolls me out from that position. It's just not possible. Just for me, I, I couldn't be anything that I wanted to be. And maybe some of you, you understand what I'm saying. We can't necessarily be anything that we want to be, but guys, here is the truth. We can be everything that God wants us to be. Amen? Yeah. And so what we're going to do is we look through the book of Acts this entire year, we're going to see some people who are just some ordinary, average men and women who did great things because of the Holy Spirit. Essentially, this is an entire study in the Holy Spirit, which I really love because I think as a church, just overall universal, I don't think we talk about the Holy Spirit enough. He's kind of like that uh, forgotten God. In fact, Francis Chan wrote a book titled Forgotten God that's all about the Holy Spirit. Great book, by the way. Um, but as we look uh, through the book of Acts, the first thing I want you to notice, duh, is the title. Acts of the Apostles, right? Most of you probably have it in your Bible, probably says Acts of the Apostles. Some of you might have, uh, and that's true, we will see the Acts of the Apostles, but a much better title, a much more fitting title is Acts of the Holy Spirit. Some of you might have that in your Bible, because some of them have that. See, it was written here at this date, and then the title was added at a much later date. It wasn't the same time. So you will see Acts of the Apostles, but it really is Acts of the Holy Spirit. We see the Holy Spirit come down and touch these guys, and they just take off. It's just like in the video. They create this viral movement that just goes on and on, and it's unstoppable. Guys, we're part of it today. I'm super excited about that. So that's what we're going to be looking at as we move into the book, okay? Checking out the Holy Spirit, how He can move and work in our lives. Because it, it wasn't just 2,000 years ago and out. It's still today. So if you guys are ready, because I am, let's get this party started, as they say. That's probably terrible church. We'll edit that later. Let's get this ball rolling. There, how about that? All right, we're going to start in uh, Acts chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 3. Verse 1 and 2 is just, uh, it's just Luke saying that he's Luke, he's the guy who's writing this book, he's writing to Theophilus, which means lover of God. It's probably a guy who was supporting him financially so that he could write. It's, so that's one and two. So we're going to start with three. You guys ready? All right. It's on the screen behind me. All right. Let's talk about Jesus and his disciples. After his suffering, he presented himself to them, that's his disciples, and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Okay, so, so let me give you the, the background here, okay? Just a couple weeks back, roughly-ish, we celebrated Christmas. We celebrated the birth of this baby Jesus coming into the world, right? How we talked about how the heavens, that's, they're enormous, right? The, the universe is just massive, and that's God's throne room. That's how big and majestic he is. The earth is his footstool. And what he did was he, he compressed himself down to the size of a human baby who's born on this earth. He walked for 30 plus years. He ministered to the people. He, he kept teaching and preaching about the kingdom. And everything Jesus talked about was the kingdom. Want to grab a lunch? Yeah, kingdom. How about pizza? Kingdom. Everything was kingdom. Always kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. He proclaimed to be the Messiah. And, and he actually proved to be the Messiah through the miracles that he performed and through the prophecies, hundreds of prophecies that were fulfilled through him. All right, so he walked this earth preaching and teaching about kingdom, preaching, proclaiming he was the Messiah. And then he's, well, he's 
betrayed by one of his closest followers. He's arrested. He's beaten. And then, then he's crucified, nailed to a cross. He dies. They put him in a tomb. You guys know the story. They roll the stone. They close it in. Disciples are all bummed out. They don't know what's going on. And then three days later, guys, he raises from the dead. And then for 40 days, he's walking around the earth, and he's seeing disciples and other people, as many as 500 people at a time, and he's, he's meeting with them, and he's talking, again, kingdom, and everything's about the kingdom, and proclaiming, now he's really proving he's the Messiah. He's overcome sin and death. And so at this point in the text, he's standing on this mountain, Mount of Olives, interestingly enough, it started back here just 40 days earlier, he was on the Mount of Olives with his disciples in that upper room, starting with communion, and then from there he goes out to the Garden of Gethsemane in and, and, and Mount Bells right there, and he prays, he cries out to the Father, if there's any other way, let it be, but your will be done. And so now we've come full circle, he's on the Mount of Olives, his disciples are there, he's ready to ascend into heaven, and he begins to speak to them, okay? So that's, that's where we're at, okay? We've gone 40 days full circle, now we'll go back to verse 4, Jesus speaks. It says, on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. So somewhere in that 40 days, he was saying, Guys, don't leave. Don't check out. Don't get it. Don't bail. Just stay right here in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. And my Father is going to give you this amazing <coughs> gift. Some of you know what the gift is, and some of you are wondering, what's the gift? Well, verse 5 tells us, for John baptized with water, but in a few days, here's the gift, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now look at the question they asked in verse 6. I love this. They, then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, at, at first glance, that may just seem like a totally boneheaded question on their part. Okay, And, and to, to a certain degree, they don't understand the kingdom. I mean, they don't. Jesus is talking kingdom, and the disciples are going back to Joel chapter 2. Yeah, the great and terrible day of the Lord. Oh, we're going to wipe out our enemies. We're going to crush them, and we're going to rule right here. That's what they're thinking, and Jesus is over here saying, No, man, it's peace. It's love. It's love one another. It's different than that. Oh, yeah, the enemies will be defeated, but it's, it's sin and death, and, and I've already done that. And that They're kind of not getting it, but, but put yourself just for a moment in their sandals, Okay. Generation after generation after generation, these Jews are looking forward to this Messiah. He's going to come into this world. He's going to usher in peace and bring hope. And, and he's, going to, he's the proclaimed Messiah. He, he's going to bring this, this kingdom back and restore it to Israel. We're going to conquer our enemies and we're going to rule. Rule, yes, supreme. And that's what they're thinking. So Jesus comes along. He fits the bill, right? He proclaims to be the Messiah. He proves to be the Messiah. But then he gets arrested. Then he's killed. Then he's, he's buried. Then he raises back to life again, right? So there's kind of like this, this little bit of an ebb and flow. Again, going back to emotions, right? We talked about emotions from last month. These disciples are probably doing this roller coaster of emotions. He's dead. He's in a tomb. What's going to happen? Then boom, he raises from the dead, proving he's the Messiah. He goes and starts walking around for 40 days. And now they're standing there with him. And they're saying, yeah, you were dead, but you're not. Are you going to restore the kingdom now? It makes perfect sense in their mindset. Again, they don't, they don't grab it 100%. But for them, it makes perfect sense. Are you going to now restore the kingdom? And I love Jesus' answer. Verse 7. <laughs> Jesus says this. It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by His own authority. Pause there for a second, because when I read that, I just think of a balloon. And maybe it's just me, because I'm kind of goofy like that, right? But I'm thinking, like, when I was a kid, I can tell you, I give my kids gifts for Christmas, they will play in the box. You guys have that? Like, the, the toy might have been, you know, a $500 toy. Okay, that's crazy. Never. But anyways, they're saying, an expensive toy. They'll play in the box. I could have gone to U-Haul for eight bucks and bought him a box, you know? I could have wrapped it and had fun. Anyways, I was the kid who played with balloons, right? Blow them up, eee, squeak and make all kinds of noises, right? But you blow up a balloon and you let go, right? It deflates. That's what I think is going on with the disciples at this time. Again, you put yourself in their sandals. They've gone through this emotional roller coaster. Jesus was dead, buried. Now he's back to life. He's proving he's the Messiah. He's right there, right up in their Kool-Aid. And they're saying, are you going to restore the kingdom? And he says, eh, you know, it's none of your business. It's essentially what he's saying, right? <laughs> totally deflate them. But he's not done talking. He continues in verse 8. He says this. 
But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Guys, when I, when I read that, there was a word that just jumped out. It, it just jumped off the page. It hit me square in the face. And I want to share that with you because it, it, it kind of changed my thinking as I went through the text. You might think the word is power. Because that's a good word. Let, just, let me just say this. That word power in there, the Greek word, is the word for dynamite. Right? Dynamite. J.J. Walker, some of you, you should know him. He was, he was, yeah, back in the day. Dynamite. Right? And that's exactly what's going on. So essentially, Jesus is saying, you're going to get this power from the Holy Spirit, and it's like dynamite. And you're going to be able to go into this world and be everything that God wants you to be, and you are going to turn the world upside down. So power is a good one. But that's not the word that really jumped out at me. Maybe you're thinking witnesses. Witnesses is good, too. You will be my witnesses. Uh, that's the Greek word martis. It means martyr, uh, which, we, which we know all about, right? One who will basically put their life down, lay down their life for Christ. Essentially, Jesus says this, you will be my martyrs, my, my witnesses. In your life and in your death, you will bring glory to God. That's good, too. But that wasn't the word. Maybe you're thinking it's, it's the, the regions that were mentioned, right? Ju Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. By the way, that's the outline of the book of Acts. That's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, Jerusalem is all chapter 1 through 7. Judea and Samaria is, is 8 through 11. And then 12 through 28 is to the ends of the earth. By the way, Goshen, Indiana, we're part of the ends of the earth. Isn't that cool? It started 2,000 years ago, thousands of miles away. And here it is today. We're more part of that. Uh, but, but again, no, that wasn't the word that jumped out at me. The word that got me. It, and it might seem goofy, it might seem completely irrelevant to you. The word was uh, uh, just a three-letter word, but. And at the very beginning of that verse, but. Let, let me explain it this way. This is, this is why it sticks with me. I'm going I'm to give you Ray's paraphrase. First time for everything, right? Ray's paraphrase of verse 7 and 8, Okay. And I'll try not to goof it up because I had like five different versions of this paraphrase I wanted to share. I'm trying to give you the, the, the mellow one because <laughs> you don't know what kind of day I've had. So essentially what Jesus is saying is he says to his disciples, he says, you guys, you want to know how the story ends. And that's not going to happen. But, there's that word, but the Holy Spirit is headed to you. And you better fasten your seatbelts, guys. Because he's going to give you this power that's like dynamite. And you're going to go out and you're going to do great things. And you're going to start this viral movement that is just going to go on and on. And it will be unstoppable. That's my paraphrase. I think it kind of fits the bill. It's exactly what happened. 2,000 years ago, it started. And it's been rolling ever since. I love it. We're part of it. Uh, listen, here, here's the deal with, with it, though. It's, it's all about the Spirit. That, that's what I really love. Again, I don't think we talk much about the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like that, that guy you don't, you don't know what to say to or, or about, right? But he's part of the Trinity. He's the Holy Spirit. He is, he's the Spirit of God that's in us. We have the same Spirit in us as Christians that raised Jesus from the dead. Do you guys even think about that? I, I, mean, I think it boggles my mind. And when I think about some things that I go through and I don't... Hear me wrong, I'm not trying to minimize anything that we go through in life. Not by any means. But when I try to compare them, sometimes I think, wow, God's Spirit can do anything. Anything. Do I really rely on Him? That, I think that's the big question. I, I really do. Listen, whoever you rely on or whatever you rely on, it will shape you. It, it, it will shape the way you think, uh, the way you talk, the way you act. Uh, who you rely upon will... It will shape your values and your, your morals, your belief system. Do, do, you, do you rely on the Holy Spirit? I mean, that's the really big question for us today. You see, if, if you rely upon an organization, you can only get what the organization can give you. Whatever power they have, that, that's what it is. And, and honestly, guys, every organization on this earth, even if it's our government, they're still limited to some degree. So, so you can only get what they, what they can offer. That's it. If you rely on another person, you can only get what that person is, is willing to, to give with you or give to you. If you rely upon yourself, you're only able to get what you can give yourself. That's it. But when you rely upon the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, 
Oh, guys, you get everything that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords got. You get everything that the creator and sustainer of life can offer to you. And I think it's, it's mind-boggling if you give this a thought for just a moment. But I think what we do is, I think what we do is we, we try to ignore it, or we don't think about it, or we just don't give the Holy Spirit enough credit, and, and, and we entertain the lie in our head, which is very simple. It goes like this. What possible difference can I make? I never thought that. I, I, I'm telling you, honestly, I have. What possible difference can I make? And I tell you what, with the Holy Spirit, you can make all the difference in the world. All the difference in the world. But you got to rely on Him. And so it doesn't matter. I mean, I know there's crazy things going on in the world. Again, don't hear me wrong. There's, there's our nation alone is enough to cause uh, stress and tension. Uh, but worldwide, guys, it doesn't matter if you rely upon the Holy Spirit. Health concerns. I know we've got them going on. I have them myself. Guys, and so, so I don't say it lightly, but, but in the big picture, it, it doesn't matter because if you rely upon the Holy Spirit, He's going to take that. He's going to give you that power. Maybe it's your job or your finances that you're concerned about. Just rely on the Holy Spirit. It can be any number of things, guys. It started 2,000 years ago. It's still going today. The Spirit is still alive. He's still active. He's still moving and working. The question is, do we rely upon Him? Because it's God's Spirit that gives us the power. <coughs> the power to live, to dream, and guys, the, the power to, to boldly and fearlessly live out our faith. To live out loud. Amen? Amen. Yes. Let's pray. Father, you are good. And God, we thank you for, for your word, for this message. Father, we ask that uh, you would make this message be, be a burden upon our hearts. Father, that we would, we would not leave this place the same, that you would change us. I know that's a scary, it's a scary thought for some. And Father, it's, it's, what does that mean? I don't know, but God, I know that if we rely upon you, we rely upon your spirit, change us, Father, and it will be good. It will be great. You have plans, you have goals, you have dreams for us. Father, move in us, work in us. God, help us to embrace your spirit. And again, change this church. Change us. Don't let us be the same as we walked in today. Father, let us leave this building today Stronger, fearless, bold, confident, and relying completely on your spirit in a way that we never, ever have. Lead us in this, Father, so that you will be glorified. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.